Hooray, tomato time. Grow them small, medium, or large, but you got to get those roots into the ground to grow now. Hi, I'm Ann Jagger for the Oregonian Homes and Gardens of the Northwest. Finally, the weather and the soil are warm enough to grow tomatoes. This year, we're trying a little experiment. Upside down tomatoes, homemade in a painted five gallon bucket. First, a little tomato talk. There are zillions of varieties of tomatoes, names like Early Girl and Beefsteak, but there are only two types of tomatoes. It says so right on the tag, determinate and indeterminate. They look exactly the same, so let me explain why you care. This is a determinate tomato. The plant will grow bushy and stocky. All the fruit will ripen about the same time. Because this is a determinant tomato, it's already determined in its DNA how tall it will get and how many fruits it will give us. So think of this tomato as very determined to only give us what it wants and when it wants. While indeterminate tomato plants are vines that continue growing very tall and fruit all season long. Indeterminate tomatoes just can't decide when to stop, so they don't. This will keep flowering and fruiting until frost. So if you want tomatoes all season long, pick this one, indeterminate. I try to grow one of each, indeterminate and determinate, just so I can have my bases covered. Now, which varieties grow best in our climate? Salets and Saniam have large tomatoes ripe in July. Oregon 11 is smaller, likes cooler weather, and is almost seedless. The prolific cherry tomato called Gold Nugget doesn't have many seeds either. Legend is a whopper. It ripens in August with four inch wide tomatoes weighing almost a pound. All of the tomatoes on that list were born and bred by Oregon State University for resistance to our hot and cold weather and our weird tomato diseases. So they're sure bets. Another piece of advice, buy plants that have the strongest, healthiest stems. Both of those tips will give us a bucket full of tomatoes. So let's try. Cover the hole in the bucket's bottom with some wet sphagnum moss and add a few inches of soil. Now, here's the tricky part. We've got to get this tomato down through that hole upside down. So you take a plastic grocery bag, put it over the top of the plant, the green part, and we'll poke that down through the sphagnum moss and soil. And then I'll add soil all the way up and roots will grow all the way along the stem. While the pot isn't too heavy, hang it in the sunshine, then fill the bucket with our super soil recipe. Here's what you'll need for that. Put a shovel full of bagged steer manure into each planting hole. Add a quarter cup of agricultural or dolomite lime and two tablespoons of bone meal. Mix well and plant. Okay, so we got our tomato experiment planted. Now we just have to sit back and relax and water and wait and watch for our first tomato. I'm Ann Jagger for the Oregonian Homes and Gardens of the Northwest. I hope our paths, our garden paths, cross again soon. Oh, water even when it's raining. There you go, get a good drink.